You've probably heard a lot of good things about Volvo's new VNL. There's a lot to like about it, and now we're going to put a couple of them to the test. HDT's senior editor Jack Roberts and me each drove one of these new VNLs. They were different trucks with different specs, but what impressed us both was the ride quality and the low noise level in the cab. On top of that, there are a lot of technical innovations on these trucks and a whole suite of powertrain options that put the VNL right at home in almost any application. When we come back, Jack and I will hit the road with a VNL 760 and a VNL 740. The truck Jack drove was a 6x2 VNL 760 equipped with a 425 horsepower D13 engine and an XE driveline. The truck had a generic line haul spec that many truckload fleets will be using. My truck was a 6x2 VNL 740 powered by a 4.25 D13 engine. It also had Volvo's adaptive gearing and adaptive loading features. It was set up for a tanker based on a Volvo customer spec. So, some first impressions. Uh, just beginning about an hour and a half drive in this VNL 425 horsepower engine. Um, I got a taste of this a couple months ago with the new VNR tractor and was really impressed with the sound dampening inside the cab here. Um, I'm clicking along at about 30 miles an hour right now, and this is just one of the quietest trucks, maybe the quietest truck I've ever ridden in. Uh, some real other quick first impressions. Great view to the front here. Wonderful panoramic windshield. Uh, lots of visibility. Uh, really nice views out the side and to the rear. The other thing is we're not at highway speed yet. But the truck seems to be very maneuverable at these low speeds. And we're on some tight little city roads here in Greensboro. But all in all, just to start out with, there's a lot to like right here. Adaptive gearing is a spec for fleets that run empty or lightly loaded a high percentage of the time. It limits the truck to 11th gear when loaded and opens up 12th gear when it's empty. This allows for better performance when loaded and very good fuel mileage when it's empty. So we're in one of Volvo's brand new VNR 740s, uh, driving around on a two-lane highway here with a speed limit of 55 miles an hour. Uh, this particular truck I'm driving right now has the adaptive gearing feature, which means when you're loaded, it won't go up to 12th gear. It'll limit you just to 11th, uh, which gives you a little bit more performance in that top gear as opposed to going up to 12th. So Volvo's designed this to drop down to 11th, and there's quite a broad range there in 11th gear where you've got a good combination of performance and torque. Uh, and the transmission doesn't go hunting for 12th gear. And predictive cruise control uses GPS terrain mapping to let the engine see what's going on ahead and how best to run the road. But better still, the system can memorize the route for better performance the next time you're on that road. So let's talk a little bit about Volvo's new predictive cruise control system. The truck is in cruise right now, and I think everybody's familiar with the basics of how predictive cruise control works. You've got GPS mapping and it ties in with various sensors in the, in the onboard computers and whatnot. And okay, there's a hill coming up and I'm gonna have to do this and that to deal with this hill. But Volvo has taken the concept a little bit further. These Volvo trucks have the, the ability to memorize the routes they run. So if you're running the same routes fairly regularly, the truck begins to familiarize itself with it. It knows what it needs to do when, it knows what works best in different circumstances. And so what this does is you get predictive cruise control, but you also have the truck's memory of how it best performed on the route. One of the latest engine innovations is compound turbocharging. It uses the turbo to drive about 50 horsepower back into the drivetrain using otherwise wasted energy from the exhaust stream. Here's Jack to explain how it works. So right now is a good example of the turbo compounding in action. I'm at 57 miles an hour, I'm in 12th gear, and I'm right at 950 RPMs on the tachometer. Uh, no shuddering, no shaking, no jittering coming up from the powertrain, just rock steady, smooth as you can be, and again, really, really nice and quiet here in the cab. There's not a lot of lateral sway with this truck going down the road. It's really, really rock steady in the lane. Uh, it's got a nice feel, it handles, it doesn't wander around the lane much. And what the engineers have done is they've taken a sway bar that they've had on vo Volvo vocational trucks for some years, and they've adapted it to the new VNL. 
So what you've got is a much stiffer front end. There's just, there's just not a lot of ability for this chassis to flex and sway and wander around. So it really translates into a much smoother ride. You don't feel top heavy at all. And again, as I said, the truck just tracks like a dream down the lane. There's not a whole lot of steering work that you have to do as you're driving down the road. You just kind of point it where you want it to go and the old Globetrotter takes care of the rest of it for you. One of the ice shift options not many people know about is called Gentle Shift. It's an option for livestock and tank haulers and it features gentler shifting at lower RPMs and fewer downshifts when slowing to a stop. It makes for a really smooth ride. We're coasting up to a stop sign here, just got off the highway and we're still in 10th gear at uh, it's coming into 30 miles an hour so it's not aggressively downshifting which with the tanker is nice because we'd be uh, getting beaten to death by now if this thing was downshifting and dropping every gear. So I've just pulled down from 10th to 7th and then into neutral here to come to a stop. So nice smooth exit off the highway. Uh, again the advantage with a tanker is you don't want it downshifting through all the gears on the way down because it makes for a pretty rough ride. So all in all, really, really nice truck maneuvering and getting up to speed here on the highway. Now this is the Globe Trotter package and that's a new spec for North America. Fairly commonplace in Europe and I've actually driven some cab over uh, Volvo Globe Trotters in Sweden. And Globe Trotter is the, is the premier luxury package for a uh, long haul tractor in Europe and they've decided to bring that name and that spec here to the States. And so if you buy a Globetrotter, you can really pick and choose from among the top end amenities Volvo has to offer. And uh, this truck is very nicely appointed inside. So there's a quick look at Volvo's new VNL. Here's a few parting thoughts from Jack Roberts. Well, another test drive's in the books and I think you could tell from my uh, time out on the highway. I really enjoyed driving the new VNL today. It handles great. Uh, that is a that is a really distinguishing feature of the truck is the uh, is the the lack of any top heavy feel. Uh, it's very balanced design. Handles great on the highway. Uh, really, really impressed with that uh, that turbo that compounded turbo. It's it's kind of wild to drive it down the road and see you know 950 on the tachometer. 1,000 RPMs at 50, 60 miles per hour. Really neat. Uh, big fan of the predictive cruise control as well. And many, many high points for the interior design. Uh, the way the cab is laid out, the thought that was put into making the driver more comfortable, more productive, safer. Really, really a nice truck all the way around. I think they've got a, a, a winner on their hands and uh, be interesting to see how the uh, market responds once they put these trucks into production and start cranking them out. I think the new VNL is a truck that has something for everybody to like. It has the technical smarts to make it very fuel efficient, it has a comfortable and well thought out cab, and the range of powertrain options will find this truck a place in almost any fleet. Hey, while you're here, check out some of our other VNL videos, and we've got tons more videos in the archive as well. Check them out, like them, and of course subscribe to the channel for more great equipment reviews. In Greensboro, North Carolina, I'm equipment editor Jim Park with HDT's senior editor Jack Roberts. Thank <laughs> you.